Up next, we have Jack Palmer speaking on behalf of New Zealand Institute of Forestry's James Treadwell, who can't be with us here today. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jack Palmer. Um, I'm a councillor on the NZIF, and I'm here in place of James Treadwell, the president of the NZIF, who unfortunately can't be with us today. Uh, and he called me up last minute yesterday to come and say some words on, on behalf of him and um, echo his thoughts. I'm also on the exec of the Future Foresters, and um, a lot of the words he's saying here today, um, I think we echo uh, pretty substantially. So I'll start off by saying, our world is in big trouble. Let's have no illusions. We are in rough seas. A winter of global discontent is on the horizon. The cost of living crisis is raging. Trust is crumbling. Inequalities are exploding, and our planet is burning. We have a duty to act, and yet we are gridlocked in colossal global dysfunction. The international com community is not ready to, or willing to tackle the big dramatic challenges of our age. These are not my words, but the words of the Secretary, Gen Secretary General spoken recently at the General Assembly of the United Nations last month. However, I could not agree more. We need heaps of trees. There can be no doubt the world is in big trouble. We are facing financial crisis, health crisis, war, climate crisis, and at times it won't, it will be seem easier to bury our heads in the sand and hope it all goes away, but it won't. For well over a decade, professional foresters in New Zealand have been calling for action. We have struggled to be heard and often have been ignored by our politicians and the media. Only recently, as we start to see the effects of floods, winds, and drought, are these same people turning to us and asking, what can we do? Some of you may be asking, what is a professional forester anyway? For me, forestry is the science and art of land and forest management. Its goal is to optimise the use of forest areas for commercial, industrial and recreational purposes, while conserving the natural resources and protecting the environment for the future. In other words, a forester is an expert in land and forest management who walks a careful balance between planning the usage of forest lands and protecting them. A forester's primary goal is sustainability. The New Zealand Institute of Forestry represents the individual forestry professional. We have been in existence for 95 years and, have, and as such have a wealth of knowledge and a history of observations on forests, both exotic and native. We advocate for all forests and have for many years been arguing for an effective, simple, sustainable forest policy. A policy which recognises the place of all trees, be they plantation or on a farm, in the urban environment or native forests. The topic for this speech and section is our place in the landscape. To me, the importance of forests cannot be underestimated. We depend on forests for our survival from the air we breathe to the wood we use, providing habitats for animals and livelihoods for humans. Forests also offer watershed protection, prevent soil erosion and mitigate climate change. Yet despite our dependence on forests, most people do not give them a second thought. As we all know, before people arrived, 80% of New Zealand was covered in forest. Many people have said that here today. Only 24% of the land now is in native forest. Another 1.7 million is in plantation forest, but that is a loss of 13 million hectares of forest since, since colonisation. Our remaining native forests continue to be threatened from introduced pests and weeds, and it makes the establishment of new forests difficult, and the continued degradation of our remaining forests, native and exo exotic, is a problem. Planting a tree is easy. Getting it to maturity is extremely difficult. There are areas of the country where in two days 1,100 deer and a similar number of goats have been shot over a 500 hectare block. For too long we have considered deforestation a non-New Zealand problem, yet I feel it is not. The lack of pest management due to poor policy and lack of finance especially is resulting in many of our native forests being degraded and in poor health. Indeed I am waiting for the international community to suggest our carbon modelling is incorrect as our native forests are actually reducing in their ability to fix carbon and potentially even going backwards. If this expectation becomes a reality, then the cost to New Zealand of letting this happen will be immense. Sadly, it is much easier to create a desert than a forest. 
To grow our forested area, especially our native forest area, we must manage our exotic pests. I do not believe trapping, shooting offences will be enough to allow us to grow our forest estate to the levels required and levels we've seen today required by the Climate Change Commission. Indeed, and I know it is controversial, there could be a place for genetic editing to manage our pests. Managing pests and weeds, including radiata pine, would be of great benefit to New Zealand and would give us a fighting chance to ensuring forests can take their rightful place in the landscape and provide the benefits we require from them. So as a professional forester, what do I believe our place in the landscape is? Frankly, frankly, I would love to see a two, three, four-fold increase in our forested area. We need heaps of trees. There are fast tracts of New Zealand which should be under forest, not only to protect the soil and water, but also to provide the people of New Zealand with a place to play, a place to work, timber for shelter, revenue from domestic and export markets, and to reduce some of the effects of climate change. However, I'm here to tell you I do not believe this is possible without major changes in our policies and our attitudes to forests, towards each other, and, and, our, and in our desire to back our corner. For too long, discussion on land use has been based on a my way or the highway argument. Native forest versus exotic, farming versus forestry, production versus conservation. Notice I'm saying exotic, not pine, as TK and others have said. It's important we look at all exotic species in this argument. We all need to come out of our corners and agree how we can work together. We must stop looking at a title of land and say all of it must be in forest, all of it must be grazing or grapes or kiwi fruit, whatever it can be, sheep, beef. But how do we split this title up and say, well, this area of this title should be in native? Perhaps this bit in production, this bit in sheep and beef, in this area perhaps grapes, kiwi fruit. This means each title owner will need multiple professional advisors for each of these different land uses. We need to stop the native versus exotic debate. Both are required, each offering their own advantages and disadvantages. Rather than sensationalise the negative, we need to accentuate the positive. Exotics offer quicker carbon capture, and we, do need, we need to agree that there's immediate action required. Exotics provide timber, jobs and recreational opportunities. Natives can protect water waves, clothe eroding landscapes, provide health benefits, and sequester carbon over a longer time period, as long as we can get on top of the pests. Let's stop arguing with each other and start supporting each other. Because frankly, we need more trees and we need a good forest ecosystem. As A.A. Milne said, you can't stay in your corner of the forest waiting for others to come to you. You have to go to them sometimes. Life is not a competition. It's a gigantic collaboration and the world will welcome and reward people who see it this way. Last week, James attended a presentation on a 100 metre tower built entirely of wood. I was uh, following this closely and it was wonderful to see and hear about. The embedded carbon within the structure along with the carbon saved by not using concrete or steel was mind boggling. However, here in New Zealand, there seems to be an influence to call for a cease of planting of exotics. We need, we need a plan. We can't use natives for our timber. Why would they want our timber, to, our buildings, to be built out of concrete and steel rather than sustainable wood from plantations? These calls to stop planting new exotic forests are a distraction, much like David has mentioned, and it's a major threat to our ability to meet our climate change targets. Some people in the farming community are making these. Some people potentially in this room are making these. But any forest is a good forest, as long as it's in the right place. As a professional forester, I implore you to open your eyes to the bigger picture. New Zealand needs more forests of all types. Our exotics have and continue to allow us to protect our natives from harvest. Our exotics will help us to meet our short-term commitments for houses, for carbon. Our natives will help make those long-term commitments. We need to be building these 100 metre towers of wood right here in New Zealand. We've got a housing crisis. We need to use this exotic timber to fix carbon in these buildings for a long period of time. We need our exotics to provide biomass for coal, to, well, to replace coal, to be used in our boilers for our primary productions and our large processes. And we need our natives to protect highly erodible land and provide waterways of protection and provide recreational pursuits throughout the country. 
It should not and must not be one or the other. We need all forests and they must be professionally managed. We need to ensure the government has a clear forest policy. As discussed, New Zealand Institute of Forestry has presented government with a clear policy which to date has been largely unrecognised. A strong policy is required as forests are long-lived, they're multifunctional, and many of the benefits accrue not to the owner but to society. Our policy must cover all forest types and have goals which span the generations. So I come back to the beginning. The world is in big trouble. We need forests and we need more forests. We need heaps of trees. The New Zealand has no clear policy how to make this happen. We have sectors and entities backed into their corner and we have a media which is showing little interest in us. We need to change this and we need to change it now. As a professional forester, I am dismayed at the apathy shown by some of our leaders, maybe politicians, sector leaders, media, or even some forest leaders. We need to collaborate and we need clear goals. We must understand the hindrance to, to attaining these goals and find ways to overcome them. We must expand our forest estate, not for us, but for our children and our grandchildren. I, for one, do not want to be unable to answer my grandchild when they ask what were you doing when the climate changed. Finally, I'd like to quote from the Lorax, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Thank you.